Hey everyone, what's up? This is Mike from Sick Drummer Magazine. I have Eugene here from the Mighty Flesh God Apocalypse. And uh, first question, you know, how's the tower going so far? So far, great. We're actually almost basically done. We get, we have like uh, three gigs left, and uh, this tour has been amazing. Like we expected, uh, great attendance, good numbers, and uh, still we were blown away because like some we had many sold out shows, especially like Canada and in the beginning also West Coast and East Coast. So everybody is super like you know grateful and hyped that like it's it's a great success. So that's a good lineup. Yeah. So. Um Tell me, uh, do you have any uh, recent endorsements? Like, what what are you guys using? I notice uh, you guys aren't using, well, that's guitar stuff, but I noticed that, you know, there's no guitar amps on the tour. Yes. So... You gotta redirect those questions actually to to the guys uh, because like yeah we run everything using Kempers or with something the, and like with, something with the with the with the Flash God guys uh, we basically run everything through like a, a MacBook like a Cubase project and they have their own sound uh, card like audio interface with a lot of effects and, and stuff like this I really like I know with obscure guys it's something similar they 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 have a lot of very uh, fancy high tech stuff and we keep the stage clean. And uh, most of the guys actually, uh, but I think, no, maybe it's only us who are using in-ear, all in-ear monitors, everybody on stage, so it's like nice and silent, That's, you know? That seems like the future of touring, yeah, like it it's is, a lot it more is. convenient to take less equipment. True. And then for the drums, you, guys, you guys are doing like a... Yeah, but the, another thing is that like, um, uh, also like convenient, it's one thing is, but I know that the Flash Guy guys have been doing this for, for a while, you know? And it's easier also to maybe mix because you have less noise on stage. So yeah. like, as long as everybody's playing to a click, you know, then then we're good so that's awesome and i know what you guys are doing that you guys are all uh, using backline the same drums yes like uh what are your what are the endorsements like what are you guys using uh <coughs> equipment wise for the drums uh well uh the the drum kit belongs to david and obscura they got this drum kit before the tour and they uh bought it right it's fresh so like we've been using it and wow. abusing for this entire tour and it's a it's an amazing kit breaking her in yes 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 uh by the way like you, you'd rather ask david more questions about the drum kit because he probably knows much much more and obviously everybody has individual stuff that we brought with with us like uh, pedals, cymbals, snare drum, uh, sticks, and triggers, and so what, I even yeah. What are you using? Yeah, what's your, what all are you endorsed by? Yeah, well, first of all, I got the Chachi Kopito Polish pedals. I've been using them since 2019. Uh, super happy about them. It's they're like super heavy, but at the same time very fast. You know, so very light. It's like a great product. You can like configure them in so many different ways. It's like ten pedals in one. I, I love awesome. it. Very very reliable. Didn't I break. I good things about. Them. Didn't break a single part like a single spring didn't snap ever since I got them so like I love them and I can only recommend them but I, I uh, played a bunch of other brands before you know I, I did um, I had a deal with Axis before that great pedals I had Axis for three and a half years and I also played uh, Pearl Demon Drive for like five years all of those oh, things those are good. yeah those are good pedals yeah too. absolutely uh, sticks I am uh, with Vader I've been playing Vader for maybe uh, since 2017 so it's like uh, six plus years now and uh, I I, uh, I got like Vader. I'm playing the Vader Shatter Hickory. That's the 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 model. It's a weird name, but usually like it's a a bit thicker than 2B. Goes a bit uh, thicker, but it's they're relatively light. What's important that I always use tape, uh, like grip tape on the sticks, uh, oh, yeah. like very casual uh, tennis racket grip tape, like nothing <laughs> fancy, just the cheapest thing that you can find. Buy it. Uh, Krim of Septic Flesh was the one who taught me to use it, and it's very good because yeah, you, Krim, he's, he decapitated as well, right? A long time ago. I remember 20, those days. 20, it's been a while. Uh, 20, 10, 20, 11. It's been a while since. And I've seen the grip tape itself just basically like it sits in your hand better, and you don't. Uh, squeeze the stick too much and you actually can relax your hand much more so it's uh, and I have very dry skin all the time so Vader sticks uh, Piesty symbols absolutely mm. love them S also since like tw 2017 beginning of 2017 nice. so six years they're like a uh, great quality product but most importantly is like the the um, uh, like the customer service uh, every time they like something goes wrong I need new symbols something cracks five seconds it's here you know on tour they've replaced wow. stuff on tour so many times like uh, in Europe obviously it's easier because they, they're based in Switzerland and Germany that's pretty cool uh, but like uh, like the, this kind of the, the customer service for me it was always like blowing me away that how much they value you know the drummers they give a deal to you you matter you know so and they're like if you ha you're in trouble no problem they're gonna help you out so you how know? would that work out if something did break when they, they they'd have to send you to like a music store or the latest uh, they ship the symbol from the factory to the venue like this wow. happened like uh, I recall on one of the tours in Europe a few years ago 
um, I said like, hey, uh, I cracked the symbol. It was be before the beginning of the tour. And they said, send us the list of, of, of gigs. And I said like, okay, the, the, the very first gig that we can ship it there and it's gonna like arrive on time to the venue, give us the venue address, the promoter, whatever, and the, they send it, like I arrived, the symbol was already there, and that's it. So that was like fantastic. Like for, for a traveling musician, that's the dream. You know, you wanna you wanna have like re reliable, like, uh, you know, support from, from the brands. It's that very is important. important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And uh, then uh, additionally, uh, foot blaster triggers, I'm using the foot blaster triggers. Uh, I'm also like, I think with the foot blaster guys since 2018-ish, uh, end of 2018 so or beginning of 2019. What type of brain do you use with the, the With the foot blaster trigger, well, the, the trigger itself is like, a, it's a built-in trigger that you, you can mount on any uh, kind of pedal, so it's universal. Like it uses either like double-sided uh, tape, you can just like to put a tape on it. So something like the, the built-in Axis E-kits or, or also like there are the on triggers and a lot okay. of other, those are very, very, very like uh, similar. So the way that it fires, usually you you don't mount anything on the bass room itself but like the trigger fires when the you put it underneath the footboard the footboard is touching the trigger so that's and a little that's piece that clicks right there yeah yeah exactly exactly that. what's very cool about them that even if you're using a double pedal you can put two triggers like one trigger on each uh, basically pedal and you can have one bass drum and like as two separate kick drums because like you that's it's awesome. a simulation of two independent kick drums which is very very important uh, for precision and like this very delicate extreme metal drumming that we do uh, it's like every kind of like every extra inch you know that you move your pedal something like it's it's very important it, it can like d determine the success or failure of your playing you know so I, I need surgical precision and that's like with, with those triggers it's it's very important uh, regarding gear like also like a trigger module I I've been using the Roland TM2 which is a very popular one but recently that's a little guy it's like about this big or so two, two yeah, channel, two two channel yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly what my roommate has uh, it's a very it's, it's relatively cool. cheap and very popular it's a good one and now I recently switched switch to a different one, a Yamaha uh, DTX 502, and it's like a slightly bigger, still small, but slightly bigger, and I think it's like an eight or something channel. So it's a, f oh, wow. a module for a, like entire uh, kit, but I use nice. it only for the triggers, and it's somehow the software itself uh, responds more much, more much responsive. better than the TM2. It's a little bit more expensive than the TM2, but like it's great, and I know that David uh, Phobes here is using the same, he was the one who recommended it to me. So. It's awesome. Uh, that's it. Uh, so symbol sticks. Uh, I don't think I have any kind of endorsement gear that I wanted to list because that's basically what I what I use. So with your uh, when you do your doubles, because I notice you do doubles, I see you're really good with the single foot. Do you do more like heel toe, or do you do swivel? Like what is the what is the technique you use? Depending on the tempo, that's a good question. You know, I'm obviously more comfortable with swivel because I've been playing swivel for like 10 plus years or something nice. and uh, I, I can do swivel I can do all the tempos that I need to do with doubles I can still do them with singles but with doubles it's m so much more efficient you know I every like every uh, ounce of energy I can save I'm gonna redirect it to something useful you know like Partying harder after the gig. No, I didn't say this. Yeah, so like, oh, yeah, you know, no, 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 I was just joking. Yeah. So basically, yes, uh, it's like it's about work smarter, not harder. You know. So and with with double strokes, I usually do just the super fast stuff. Like we have this song, "The Violation," which is 270 BPM, and I do nice. that one uh, with double strokes. It's uh, so much easier because I can. F focus 100% on my hands rather to make sure that my hands are good you know and the feet are like happening on their own with double strokes and like everything like 220 230 240 I easily do it with singles I nice. I do doubles on purpose from time to time even during like during live gigs for those slow songs just to kind of practice them so I use some of the gigs to rehearse my doubles you know so and I need to make sure that like, okay I practice doubles at slower tempos I like master a bit higher level of control and so like it's 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 very important it's it's beneficial anyway so yeah doubles feel totally different from singles yeah completely like like playing a different instrument you know so and I was like I wanted to give a shout out to Eric Marotti of certification because he was the one who basically taught me how to do that in like that's awesome. five minutes you know that's my boy we were just hanging out like, the other night if you saw I, my I page, was like actually. big zero in doubles and he said like hey Eugene like what's the problem it's easy you know and he showed it to me like all of a sudden it works you know and I'm like holy crap you know what's going on that's so yeah awesome, yeah bro. he's very good at explaining it in a very simple way you know? that's cool to hear okay so tell me if you weren't a drummer what would you do for an alternative career or what would you inspire be inspired uh, not a drummer or not a musician mm -hmm. Yeah, just not playing drums. Uh, yeah, maybe not doing the music drum like thing. Like not yeah. music at all. Yeah, like different no kind of career, different kind of. Uh, you know, I always, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be either an actor 
or lately actually a voice actor i would love to voice some shit i don't That'd know like, cool. like like cartoons cool. uh video games anime anything like uh, voice acting is something that i'm very fascinated by. so do you do impersonations and stuff no no oh. impersonation i'm not good at that but like you know some some sometimes i felt like oh, i would probably do that you know it doesn't require me to like i can break all my limbs and still be a voice actor you know so, <laughs> but on the side i'm actually in a kind of a kind of an it guy because that, that's what i studied so i still didn't finish my studies but i was doing it but it is basically like uh, let's say a plan b you know you know, things go wrong, a pandemic, you yeah. know, another pandemic, you know, another oh, world war, who knows, you know. Yeah, I hope and no then, more of that happens. Yeah, no, 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 but, but still, like, it's, and it never hurts to have something. And, you know, it's yeah. not about, like, always thinking, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to quit music so I can do IT. It's like studying something, anything in a in a like in university is like definitely a plus doesn't matter what you do but the kind of education it teaches you discipline it teaches you a lot of very valuable qualities that you can use in life you know a lot of the university stuff i studied uh, i apply in drumming as well you know it's like it's you know, it's part of your life you know so i i definitely say that whoever thinks that oh i'm gonna quit college because i want to become a drummer you know, you know like think twice because like that's it doesn't matter if you're never going to use your college degree for blast beats you know and still it's it's never going to hurt you know so I, in my opinion it's an important experience so so who was your your influences and what got you into drumming oh okay so um i never wanted to be a drummer that, there we go yes oh, wow, like that really? was like i never really cared about that i wanted to be in a band that was, my first thing I actually I was a bass player so That's because cool. I was like it was so stupid because I was like this this teenage <laughs> jealousy I wanted to be a guy in front I was like that's why I've never be the drummer because he's in the back nobody sees him nobody cares about him but then like some people convinced me like no man like in a metal band and a rock band a drummer he, that he's he got the spotlight you know it's about yeah, that definitely. and then my father uh, my father used to be a drummer actually but like um, he never he never really taught me anything like it never was like a big inspiration for me to become a drummer but as a musician for sure I played piano for seven years before I started playing drums when I was a kid. And then when I started playing, it, it was all about being in a band, like just like having a band and playing gigs and go on tours and like no matter what like I do, I'm, I'm fine with that. So as long as I can play for people live music and make music, that's, that, that was the mo most important thing for me. That's when, awesome. when I got into like, I started, uh, it was like a lot of this like early 2000s, maybe like new metal movement, like Joy of Slipknot, like probably one, one of my number one uh, influences back then. I was like, holy crap, this guy is insanely fast. And then I hear like Nile and you know, Morbid Angel. I'm like, wow, this yeah. is like even on a new, whole new level, you know? When I got into like more extreme metal drumming, yeah, I discovered obviously Derek Roddy it was in the number one and yeah. uh, I, his DVD. Oh, and I was like, I remember watching it in class in school and I was like, showing it to everyone this guy I want to become like him you know like he's so crazy and I was like 14 or 15 it was insane and then it was George of Nile and then uh, Tim Young he was back in the Divine Heresy uh, then uh, I was oh, just we just interviewed Tim the other night I was just talking about I movie. think I saw the other post yeah. <laughs> oh, man one of the he's one of my also like all-time favorites like the way that he plays he's like there's so much weird movement and he's like he's a real artist you know he's not just playing like this it's like it's yeah, crazy he, had, I love he his goes play. crazy he yes, crazy. He's super cool yes. on the show. also that his Pretty technique cool. is insane yeah, and is. Uh, uh then um a crim of septic flash also one of my biggest idols actually i always like thought oh, i want to be like this guy you know like he's kind of a my big brother you know like my cool big brother you know so um, that's cool that's and, awesome yeah, that's uh, flow me out of cryptopsy. I remember also like watching a lot of his playing and in, in, in his uh, DVD as well. So those flow keeps are real. Oh man, he's sick as hell. All those drummers are really good drummers. Yeah, absolutely, all amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, is there anything you want to say in closing uh, to all your fans, to all your people? Uh, you know. A message to aspiring musicians well yes well thank you thank you first of all thanks for having me and thanks for uh, to all the thank people you. all the fans for coming out to, to the shows I connected with a lot of drummers uh, I'm very very thankful for this because I also like teach here and there and I met a lot of brilliant musicians and this is very also inspiring for me to to when I teach I learn myself you know and I this is like a sort of a therapy for me because like I'm I'm a drum nerd you know so I I love talking about technique talking about gear that's what I've been doing this for for like 15 years now or something maybe even more so uh yeah never never give up on your dreams keep working hard remember there are no shortcuts the only way to make hard work enjoyable is you know if you learn how to love it then it becomes easy and it becomes part of your life and focus on the very very primitive things but 
focus on the journey not the destination it's not about getting to the 300 bpm but it's about living in the moment now and enjoying what you're doing and it's it applies to everything in life and obviously in drumming as well so totally. never forget why you started doing this like sometimes we have dark days sometimes you want to quit but then if you feel like you're playing drums and uh, you're not enjoying it anymore you need to stop and ask yourself like why am I doing this am I not supposed <laughs> to enjoy this you know then if if you are not enjoying it change something you know because this is why you started doing it so this is the most important thing that is right on thank you so much my pleasure it's an honor, very, very honor to be featured here thanks thank you man thanks <laughs> that was awesome dude